So what we're going to do over the course of the next little bit is we're going to talk about what are my biggest gap year secrets? How are you going to maximize your year? Because I know that there's often a lot of fear around like, I'm not going to make the most of my time or um, I don't know where to start or I don't know what to do or I don't know how to stay motivated. I know these things are are all real because you've never done a gap year before. So like, how are you expected to know all these things? The, the answer is you're not. Um, but I can give you some tips and tricks to get you going. And that's my goal for this is I'm going to take some of the things that I commonly hear and I've learned a lot about and share them a little bit with you. So I've got four things to share with you. But what I need you guys to do is to either open a new Google Doc or grab a piece of paper. I don't know. I'm a I'm a paper note taker. Um, but we're going to do some activities together. So this isn't going to be like a, a talk at you thing. This is going to be a do thing. So I really want to see some engagement over in the chat. Uh, if you can, um, that's going to be really, really helpful. Um, for you to be able to interact and to give me some feedback on how this is going for you. So uh, make sure you have those, um, all of those papers, pens, pencils, open Google Doc, whatever it is, because you won't want to miss some of the amazing stuff that's coming at you over the next little bit. So um, if you're ready, give me uh, give me an exclamation mark. We'll, we'll continue with Sam. I think that's working for everybody is throw some exclamation marks in there if you are ready to rock and roll and uh, really get moving on this because this is the start of your gap year and this is this is some tangible things that you can do to get yourself moving forward. Um, thanks, Jads, for answering that. There we go. We're seeing lots of stuff. All right, here you go. Um, so secret number one, well, we're just jumping right in. Secret number one is goals are your North Star. And uh, people who are in the game plan right now, they hear me say this all the time. How does this relate back to your goals? Um, this is where you need to start. If you have not set your goals for your gap year, let's just do some of that right now. Because I think if you listen to what Rhea was saying, if you listen to what Sam was saying in his talk, these are all things that these are all people who've had goals and have worked towards them. And, and they recommend that for other people too. So we really have to start with setting our goals. Um, so if you haven't done this or or if you have and you want to revisit them, this is the place to go. Uh, had some wonderful conversations with some of our game plan folks uh, in the beginning when they came on board. We talked a lot about goal setting and we refined some of those goals so that they were realistic. But let's jump in. When we're setting goals, what I want you to do is I want you to use Simon Sinek's Start With Why. Let me know in the comments with uh, um, just a yes if you have watched Simon Sinek's Start With Why talk. This is super famous in the coaching community. It's super famous in the nonprofit world. It's super famous in business. Uh, but I'm bringing it to the gap year sphere. Um, because often we talk about the what. So what am I going to do on my gap year? So people say, I'm taking a gap year. People say, oh, what are you going to do on your gap year? And we start with the, I'm going to travel, or I'm going to get a job, or I'm going to work. And that's the what. Um, and the what is very mechanical. Um, and it's about just making some decisions and plugging things into your gap year. But we need to take one step back and we need to start with why. Why are you taking a gap year? And I think that this is so important to start with why. Why are you taking a gap year? Why did you make this decision? Because that is going to help you define what your goals are. So I'd love to hear, yes, Samira, felt overwhelmed. Yes, you can't do it all, 100%. So there's your why. And that's going to be where you're going to start to be able to root your goals in that starting with why. That gives you a good framework and a good headspace to start to create that. Um, so there we go. It's called Start With Why. And his name is Simon Sinek. That's his name. So Simon Sinek, Start With Why. Thanks, Jazz, for popping that in Discord. Um, it's a great resource, great place to start, but I think you get the gist of it. So go do that later and we'll move on to the next part. The second thing I want us think of you think of is I want you to think about what is your future self. So imagine yourself sitting down in a bar with your buddies or a coffee shop with your buddies, having a drink, and you're a year older, your gap year has just ended, and 
What are you telling them about yourself? What are you telling them about your year? How are you different? What did you learn? What did you see? Just sit there and imagine what that would be like. What would you tell them? Or what would you want to tell them? Because this is your ideal. This is your imagination. If all of your wildest gap year dreams came true, what would you tell them in that bar? What would you tell them sitting down over coffee? So if we take the start with why, why did you take a gap year? And how are you going to be different at the end of your gap year? We've got a pretty good framework. We're here and we need to get to here. And I think that's a really powerful place to start because now instead of just being here, we're here. And we've got a, we've got a starting point and we've got an ending point. And that's a really, really great framework to start to build the rest of your gap year around. Um, when it comes to setting goals, I recommend that we set goals in three different categories. Um, I think sometimes there are things that we want to change about ourselves personally. Maybe there is a particular skill you want to develop or um, you, you, you would like to improve yourself in some way, whether that's confidence or independence. Those are the personal goals that you have. The second type of goal I want you to create or to think about creating is those strategic ones. So what are those things that are going to set you up post gap year, whatever that looks like? So maybe it's getting clarity on what you want to study afterwards. Maybe it's um, that you want to work in a, a restaurant and so you need your serve smart certification um, or you want to work with kids and you're going to need your first aid certification or you want to be a firefighter and you need to be in like super good physical shape. Those are all strategic goals of things that you can put into your gap year. These are the things that I want to work on on my year um, that are going to set me up for success for my future. So that's category number two. Category number three is fun. Okay. So don't discount this. This is so important. I'm going to come back to it again and again and again. Your gap year doesn't have to be all business. It can be fun. It can be exciting. I think especially in this pandemic, the joy has been sucked out of so many things. Um, and getting out of bed sometimes is really challenging. So what are the things that are going to be fun for you? What are those things that are going to keep you motivated, get you out of bed? Um, is it learning a particular art form? Is it learning a language? Is it learning to skydive or scuba dive? Is it a travel opportunity? Is it, um, I don't know, redecorating your bedroom? Those things don't necessarily change who you are. They don't necessarily put you closer to your dream career, but it's so valuable to have those things that are just plain fun for you. Um, so I'm curious, what was, what, was, what was interesting in there for you? How many of you guys have any of these goals? What was interesting? What came up for you that kind of stuck out a little bit, like a little light bulb went off, like my, uh, like my friend here? How many of you had a light bulb moment there? Let me know, what was your light bulb moment when it comes to goal setting? I'm so excited to hear what you have to say. I love goal setting. So we'll let those come in. Ah, paintball, yes. Oh my gosh, amazing. Except for those little bruises, Asmane, they're, they're less, than, less than desirable. Yeah, categorize your goals for sure. These are all beautiful things. Good, great. So in the game plan, one of the activities that we have in the gap year planning section, which is all tools for help you to, helping you to plan your gap year, is we take away um, all of that structure. Um, take away all of that like formality of goal setting. We're supposed to be having fun. It's supposed to be light and different um, and creative and, and allowing us to create things. So when I talk about goal setting for your gap year, I give you these prompts because I want you to think differently. So this is an activity I want you to actually do. So I'm going to read through these nice and slowly, but I want you to take your pen and paper or your Google Doc or whatever you've got open. And I want you to actually create one of these sentences. And I'd love for you to share it in the chat with other people. So when you're going to plan your goals, these are some things that you can start to think of to think differently. Here we go. So I, something you want to learn. 
What is something you want to learn that you didn't know before? That could be something super formal, like I want to learn to code, or I want to learn a language. Um, it could be that you want to learn a craft. You want to learn how to crochet. You want to learn how to change a light bulb. You want to learn how to bake a croissant. It could be anything. So what is something you want to learn? The second one is what do you want to overcome? All of us have these barriers in our lives or these things that we see as a deficit or a challenge for us. Um, so what is that, that thing that you want to overcome? Do you want to overcome your shyness? Do you want to overcome your social anxiety? Do you want to overcome your fear of heights? Do you want to overcome your fear of public speaking? So what is something that you feel is holding you back that you can push through over the course of your gap year? The next one is to test. Your gap year is about experimentation and trying things. Um, so what are those things that you've always been curious about? And you just want to test it out. Maybe like, can I make any money selling the jewelry that I make? Or I'd like to test out to see if um, I actually like working in a hair, hair salon. So what are those things that are there? So what are the things you want to test? They just Give it a test, like it's completely pie in the sky, doesn't matter if it's real, what are the things you want to test? The next one is to create. And I have a great podcast, uh, the, the podcast is called The Gap Year Podcast, um, but there's an episode with Zippy, who is a um, an amazing therapist, and she talks about the power of creating something. That's how we feel powerful. That's how we feel in control, is we take nothing and turn it into something. So that could be artistic. If, if you are artistic, then I think that that's really, really great. And you can you can leverage that and you can use that. But if you're not artistic, you can still create things. Um, you could bake something. You could um, uh, rewire a car, get the car up and running. You can build um, planter boxes. You could start your own garden. You can create something beautiful. The next one is to experience. So what is something you want to experience? And I think that this one is so nice because it's so open-ended. Um, what is something you want to experience on your gap year? I threw in this one because I think it's really, really great um, to meet. Who do you want to meet? Is there a particular person? Like you can put in a name. I want to meet Barack Obama. I want to meet Michelle Obama. Uh, I want to meet trust Justin Trudeau. I want to meet this particular celebrity. Um, you can give a physical name. You can also give, um, I want to meet somebody who has the same values as I do. I want to meet a community of people who are also vegan. I want to meet uh, the love of my life. I want to meet somebody that lives in India. I want to meet... Um, somebody who uh, has written their own book. I want somebody, I want to meet somebody in the career that I want to get into. Um, so what is somebody you want to meet? And then the last one is what do you want to tell stories about? And this comes back to that idea of fun. What do you want to tell stories about? What are you sitting in that bar talking about? Um, and I love these comments that are coming in. Um, they're just so amazing. And I can see the ideas forming in your heads as we're breaking it down. Um, Rachel, using a sewing machine. Amazing. We're, we're talking a lot about uh, like um, heading out to Value Village, doing some thrift shopping and creating new clothing from old. Amazing. Uh, a thousand piece puzzle. Whoops, I'm sharing stuff. I didn't know I could do that. That's amazing. Um, amazing. Um, let's see what else is in there. Personal finance. Yes, Samira, 100%. That's a big one. Um, ASL, big time. We got lots of people with ASL. Um, I popped it into the game plan discord. There is a, a course that went on sale for 35 US dollars, um, learning how to do ASL on your own time. Uh, maybe Jazz can hop into that and transfer it over to the Frosh Week one. Um, so that's there. It's under opportunities, by the way, Jazz. Um, to create an initiative, even if it doesn't work, I'm confident it will gain a lot of experience and effort. Amazing, Hardeep. Amazing. ASL, drive my own motorcycle. Wicked. So good. McGill Personal Finance course is really good. It is. You got it. Amazing. Uh, your class six license for sure. For sure. 
oh my gosh, this is, this is amazing. Um, and I can see all of these things being achieved on your gap year. These are not pie in the sky, uh, made up airy fairy ones. These are very concrete and I think they're all achievable, which is really, really beautiful to see. So, so props to all of you guys, you guys are killing it. This is what I want to see when it comes to goal setting. But that was only secret number one. So let's jump into secret number two to make sure we have time to get all the way to four. Cool. Um, so secret number two, curiosity plus failure equals winning. Um, and I think that sometimes we're really scared of failure. We don't know what to make of it. We've been told our whole lives that failure is bad, um, which it 100% is not. Um, failure is the best form of growth, like 100% hands down. This is your best type of learning that you will ever experience is when things don't go your way, uh, 100%. So let's start on the curiosity side of things. Your gap year is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, and the reason I say that is because it's at this really cool time in your life where you are making that transition into adulthood, you're gaining responsibility, but you don't have too many things tying you down. You have an opportunity to get out there and test things. <clears throat> and if it does fail, the failure doesn't impact that many things. If you're 45 and you want to see if that business venture is going to get off the ground, if you're 45 years old, you've got a mortgage, you've got kids you need to save for their university, you've got a husband, you've got all of these things that are going to make that opportunity a little bit more difficult to achieve. So there's so much value in getting out there and trying these things right now while you are on your gap year. It really is such a prime time to make things things happen for yourself. Second thing I want to say on curiosity, this is your year. What are you curious about? What do you want to learn about? Okay, this isn't about filling anybody else's expectations. This is about your expectations and what you are all about. So what is it that you are curious about? What are those things that you have always just been like, hmm, that's interesting. Maybe you were sitting in history class and it was super interesting to learn about the Colosseum um, in Rome and like that's not going to help you in your future career, but you want to go see it. Um, that's curiosity to actually be there and to see how they built that. Or maybe it's the pyramids and actually experience for the first time like how did this happen? Hundreds and thousands, hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, uh, but thousands of years ago, how were they able to create these structures? <laughs> so use that curiosity to drive your gap year. Um, and then when we're going to come back to fun again. It doesn't all have to be strategic and purposeful. That's why I talk about that in the first thing. When you're setting your goals, it doesn't have to be purposeful. It can just be for curiosity's sake. Um, and, and that's a really great way to experiment while you're on your gap year. So I'd love to hear in the comments, what are some things that you're curious about? Whether they make sense or not, don't filter yourself. Just pop it in there. What are those things over the course of your lifetime that we're like, huh? That's interesting. I wonder how that works. Um, I'd love to, to hear them. It doesn't mean you have to do anything on your gap year, but what are those things that you are curious about? Um, and, and I think that we'll, we'll get some really cool answers here and it might spark some ideas for other people as well. So lots of curiosity. That is going to be something that's going to help you continue to learn over the course of your whole lifetime. So if you can tap into that now, that's a good place to be. Um, we did a great podcast actually with Tim Tamashiro, who is an amazing, um, jazz musician. He hosted CBC radio for a while. Um, really great guy, but he talks about curiosity as, um, scratching every itch. So he took a grown up gap year, um, which is what we talked about in the podcast, but he said there were so many things, so many itches that he had that he just had to scratch. Um, they were just things that he was curious about, but never had the chance to explore. And so um, that's how he framed curiosity. So that might be another thing to think about it. What's out there in the universe? Yeah, do some exploring. Learn about Area 51. What's going on with those aliens? What's happening out there? Um, what, is a, what is a black hole? How does that work? What's going on? What does it take to be an astronaut? Nana, I love it. The Holocaust, European culture, oh my goodness. 
so deep. There's so many amazing things here. Economics. Yes. Deflation and inflation. Oh my goodness. These are amazing things. Now let me talk about failure for a second here. Um, yes, Samira, I hear you. Making new friends in a new town. You've got a new challenge in front of you, my friend. Um, anybody else in Winnipeg, hit up Samira. She uh, She's new to the town. Um, get to know her. She's awesome. Um, let's talk about failure here for a second. And this is a concept that is so important on your gap year. So down, this is a lovely diagram of a brain and kind of in that base part, there is your comfort zone and it's green and it's warm and fuzzy and it's your pajamas on the couch, super, super comfortable, laid back, um, all things that you're, you're very familiar with. And this is the place where we tend to like to be. We really like to be in that comfort zone because it feels good. It feels safe. It feels controlled. Um, we're not going to fail if we're in that comfort zone. And sometimes that feels really good. And sometimes that's what we need. Um, but that's not where we're going to learn and grow and push ourselves and become a different person than we are right now. You're going to be the same person at the end if you stay in that comfort zone. We always talk about getting out of our comfort zone. But what does that actually mean? What that means is stepping into a challenge zone where there is a space for you to push your own boundaries, to get out of your comfort zone and to try something that just puts you on edge a little bit. Maybe gets your adrenaline going a little bit. Maybe you're tapping into that curiosity, but it's unfamiliar and getting into that challenge zone. That challenge zone is the best place for learning. It's where you're going to be um, the most attuned to what's going on. There's a risk of failure in there, and that's not a bad thing. But getting into that challenge zone, that's really where you're going to see the most impact on yourself. Um, but there's also a little warning here. There's also something beyond the challenge zone that puts you into your overwhelm zone. And that's when you are so far out of your comfort zone that you are not functioning properly. You're not learning. You're not growing because you are too busy panicking. You are uncomfortable to such a degree that you cannot even compute what's going on. So I'd love to know where you fall on this one. Um, skydiving. If you were to go, if you were to be pushed out of a plane right now with a parachute on your back, or does that put you in your comfort zone, in your challenge zone, or in your overwhelm zone? Let me know in the comments. Where does that fall for you? Because where you fall is going to be different from where your friends fall, from where your parents fall, even from where people assume you would fall. I shouldn't be using fall when I'm talking about parachuting, but you, in which zone you would be in. Um, when we're when we're talking um, about that. So people could have assumptions about where you are. We see challenge zone, overwhelm zone, uh, challenge, challenge for sure. Yeah. And I think that that's really, really interesting to see that we've got people in all sorts of different place. Total panic. Yes. Yes, I know. And I think that we want to keep ourselves in that challenge zone whenever we can. But if we do hit that overwhelm zone for whatever single thing or whatever combinations of things, we've got to pull ourselves back down into that comfort zone for a second and then start to creep ourselves and push ourselves back into that challenge zone. Nana, I'm with you. I'm in an overwhelm zone. I can, I can swim, but I know I can't fly. So I am not jumping out of a plane. Thank you very much. Um, when we talk about failure, um, these are some really good things that we, we sometimes use when we're talking in the business world. We go, we go all in and we fail fast. Um, so I think that that's a really, really cool thing, um, to, to talk about. And as Maine, you probably, uh, got some really good lessons in failing fast, uh, in all of your business experience there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to need a drink here. Um, but thinking about trying something and then if it doesn't work, get out fast, um, try something, go all in, give it a shot. And then if it's not working for you, you don't need to stick it out till the end. Uh, Brooke, I'm talking to you too here. Um, if, if it's not working, readjust your course. There is nothing saying that you need to make it to this 
made up end goal that you've set for yourself. If it's not working for you, readjust your course and set new goals. Um, all of that stuff is going to help you grow. It's going to teach you stuff about yourself, but it's also going to allow you to learn how to readjust your course um, and get on the right track for you and for what you're doing and to, for the goals that you want to achieve. So um, go all in, fail fast, readjust your course and set new goals. Um, I think it's so good. Yes, Brooke. Um, yeah, you got it. So I think that's really important. So here's another quick activity for us. I want you to take another piece of paper or that Google Doc, and I want you to split it again in two. On the left hand side, I want you to write one or two things that you want to do on your gap year. Um, so just think of them. Um, start a business. It doesn't have to be super detailed. Go to Europe. Um, I don't know, read a book, whatever it is, come up with two things that you want to do on your gap year. So there you go. Two things on the left hand side. Then on the right hand side, next to those one or two things that you've put on there, what I want you to do is what would you learn if you failed at it? OK, so let's say you were starting a business and it totally tanked. What are the lessons that you're going to take away from that? What is the best worst case scenario, we'll say? OK, so like skydiving is not a great idea because like there is a very worst case scenario in that one. Um, but but think about even if you got up in the plane and you were in your like overwhelm zone and you didn't jump out of that plane. What 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 would you have learned in that process? The, these are the things that I want you to start thinking about is when you're staring down the barrel of one of your goals or one of your challenges that's in front of you, I want you to think what even if this fails, what am I going to take away from it? And I think that allows us to take bigger risks when we can actually look at it and say, you know what? Worst case scenario, this is going to happen and this is what I'm going to learn about myself, about the world. It can be really, really helpful for you. There you go. Um, moving on to secret number three. Oh, you guys are dark. You guys are dark, Hardeep. My goodness. Uh, I guess I brought I brought it up. OK, fair enough. I brought it up. I'll take the responsibility for that one. We'll we'll stop with that, too. Um, there we go. <laughs> OK. Secret numero trois. Um, we need to track our progress. We need to have some sort of mechanism where we can see how much we are growing. OK, so as human beings, we're actually motivated by progress. Um, and you see this show up all over the place. You see this show up in school. Um, we progress through the grades. We um, we try and get better um, letter grades. So you move from kindergarten to grade one, grade one to grade two, and we're always striving for that next level. Um, you get an 80 on your exam and you actually want an 85. So you're going to work harder to get that, that 85. So you see progress. We always want to be getting better at things. Um, you're at the gym and you're like, pumping 40 pound weights, you want to get up to 60 and, and you see that growth. You're like, yeah, now I've got 50. Now I'm at 55. Like bring on the 60. Here we go. I can't, I can't lift 60 by the way. Um, but we are motivated by seeing that progress. And when you're on a gap year and we think of it sometimes as this blank space, that it's easy to overlook what you've accomplished. Super easy to just sit back and be like, I did nothing on my year. Um, and it can be hard to articulate how you have grown and changed if you're not actually thinking about it and realizing it. And the term that I often use is capturing the learning of your experiences. We need to find some way to measure and to track our progress on our gap year. And this is going to make you feel good about yourself. It's going to help you if you want to rewrite your resume. It's going to help you fill out scholarship applications. And it's going to help you to take inventory of how you're different than when you started your gap year. 
So one of the things that we do in the Gap Year Game Plan is we have the Student of Leadership and Humanity Award. Um, and this is a great way with that reward system and like working towards specific things. So as part of the program, you can actually earn all of these different badges. So the big certification at the end is called the Student of Leadership and Humanity Award. And it is an international Gap Year Award, which is such a great thing to put on your resume, on your LinkedIn profile, super, super helpful to um, for that external validation that you did have a very intentional time. So um, it's a great way to do it. If there's any alum here that want to earn this, um, just DM me after and I can get you set up in the portal to fill out the application. Um, so if that's you, there you go. Uh, but you can actually work towards earning these badges that will allow you to see all of the growth that you're experiencing, which can be really, really, really helpful. So there you go. That's another way to measure your progress. So here's my pro tip on this one is you need to be able to document it. And I see all sorts of things in here. Um, a photo journal. Yes. Yeah, so good. Uh, list of and a dedicated journal for sure. So here you go. This is one way that you can um, measure these things or keep track of them. Take a journal. Um, we talked about this in our in our um, staying motivated session yesterday as well. Take a journal, and in the front half, this is kind of your your dumping ground for all of your ideas. I want to do this. I want to do that. Um, and I want you to think of the big things, like I want to take this trip or I want to get this certification, or I want to like all of those big things that you're gonna that you're dreaming of doing, but also the small things, okay? Also the small things. This is what books do you want to read? What TV series do you want to watch? What documentaries do you want to watch? Um, what, uh, what do you want to learn to cook? Because in your gap year, you're going to have these big events that are going to be really helpful for you and you can plunk them into a calendar, but there's also going to be lots of downtime in between those larger things that are happening. And if you have a list that you can go back to, if you're just sitting at home twiddling your thumbs and, uh, just consuming time on Netflix, go back to that list. Oh yeah, I wanted to check that book out of the library or um, I wanted to, to try to train to run a 5K. So let me get started on that. So having a place, yes, Jasmine, a huge brain dump. So, so, so good. Um, keep that in the first half. But this is where a lot of people forget. The second half of that journal, document all of the things that you did. Because I talked to so many people at the end of their gap year, and I said, what did you do? And they could name about four things that they did on their gap year. I said, ah, 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 you did way more than that. And I can name another 10 things that they did, but they forgot about it. A year is a long time. So keeping track of all the things that you can do will allow you at the end of the year to go back and be like, man, I have 65 pages of things that I did, books that I read, people that I met, um, course, uh, free online courses that I took, uh, places I went. All of these things are so, so, so good. Restaurants to try. Awesome. Yes, another great thing. So keeping these lists will inspire you on the days that you don't feel so motivated and also give you tons of places to actually track that. So at the end, when you go to apply for a job, you have that information all there and you can plug it in, plunk it into your resume, plunk it into your cover letter, read through it before your interview, and you'll have so much language to be able to actually articulate how you've grown and changed on your gap year. Make sense? Let me know in the chat if that was helpful. Is anybody going to do that or any other ways you're going to keep track of all of the things that you do on your gap year? Pop it into the chat while I take a sip because this is a lot of talking. I'm so excited. This is the stuff I, I live for. Can you tell? Yeah, so documenting is so good. I have so many journals um, where I keep it. Um, other people use apps as well. Um, so even the Microsoft to do, um, is a great one because what you can do is you can create different lists, like a book list, a TV show list, a travel list, a restaurant list. Thanks as main, um, all of that 
um, you can put into different lists in the in the to do app. And then once you check it off, it keeps it on the list, but it just crosses it out and moves it to the bottom. So you don't actually lose the stuff you've already completed. So if you are more of a digital person, you don't like the notebook idea, find an app that will allow you to do that. Notion is up again. Oh my goodness. This is like the third time that I've heard people say Notion. So I need to check this out. You guys, you guys are teaching me so many things. Um, yeah. So, so many people. Um, great. So use that. Um, secret number four is to build community. And as I was putting this, uh, as I was reviewing this presentation for today, I was like, I don't even think I need to say anything about this because the community that you're building right now has been so heartwarming to see. And I can see the connections and I can see the inspiration and I can see all of these things that you guys are creating right now by being here in this space and creating those bonds that are going to make it. So I think that like, I'll say some stuff about it, but I think the proof is in this event in itself, in the Discord chat that's going on, um, in the connections that you're making, in the way that you're networking, sharing ideas, even this chat in this presentation. Um, there's been so many things that have been shared that are going to help everybody. Um, so building community is going to be one of the best things that you can do. And I'll say that making friends as a grown up is hard. It, it just, it just, it's just hard. Um, because when you're in school, you kind of show up and there's a thousand people in your high school that are all kind of the same age, kind of grew up in the same community, have lots of shared experiences, and there's going to be somebody there that you can befriend. Um, but as a grown up, especially on a gap year where you maybe don't have um, colleagues at a job or you don't have a, a permanent volunteer position, making friends can be really, really difficult. Yes, especially in a pandemic. Um, finding those communities is so, so powerful um, and really a great thing to do. And we all need cheerleaders and motivators and accountability buddies. Um, so I know some of you started an accountability group on uh, Instagram, I think. Uh, use the Discord server. But that's what we are. Um, living in the world of gap years, so there are some things that that the people that are outsiders, it's like like the muggles, right? Like they don't get it. They don't understand that there's this whole other world going on. So there's this inside community, which is so beautiful to have. And we just understand it. Um, somebody will just say, I'm tired of explaining why I'm taking a gap year. And everybody's like, oh, I know, me too. Because we get it. We're all living there together. Um, and we can help keep each other accountable. We can help share things that we're finding online or different programs, different resources, and we can really get out there, which is so great. Um, and we are your extended network. We are here to help you. Um, all of the facilitators that are coming in, Jazz and myself, we are, we are more than happy to share our network with you. And you guys are introducing people to other people as well. So there, we are your extended network and you can do so many amazing things. So what I want to say now is what if you were able to set those goals? What if you were able to achieve all of the things that you set out? What if this was the best year that you ever had? What if you had that community of people? What if you had all the resources you need? What would that feel like for you? What if you are sitting down in the coffee shop and you're sitting there and you said, man, my gap year changed my life for the better. It set me on a new path. I met the most amazing people. I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about the world around me. This is what we want for you. That's why the Canadian Gap Year Association exists. We want that for you. And we know that you want that too. And there are so many great resources that we have for you. That's why we put on this event. That's why we have the Gap Year Game Plan, because we want you to feel that success at the end of your year. And we want you to just be in the best place possible. So that's why the Gap Year Game Plan exists. And I know I've talked about it kind of a little bit in between. So I want to just very clearly talk about a little bit about what it is so that you have an idea. 
So it is that built-in community. We have a, a Discord server for people who are on their gap year. Um, we share all sorts of resources. So very similar to what's happening in the Frost Week one, um, but it's a little bit extended. Um, it goes throughout the entire year. We have experts that come in and talk about different things. So we're going to have uh, a mental health expert come in. I talked about the sexual health expert come in. Um, we're going to uh, have all sorts of different experts come in doing monthly chats with us. We've got monthly social events uh, that happen. And we've got a portal of all sorts of incredible resources to help you at every step of the way. So if any of those goals seemed a little bit overwhelming for you or you're planning your gap year and you're getting stuck, there are tons of resources that are available for you. Um, and then you can earn that award at the end, which is just so, so, so great. Um, and so that's what the Gap Your Game Plan is. Um, so if you are enjoying this community and you feel like you might want to stick around and level up um, and stick around and, and join us for more, if you're really ready to maximize your Gap Year, um, then this is something you should definitely, definitely check out. We're going to have lots of information coming at you um, to let you know a little bit more about how you can get involved. Um, but we do have a sliding scale of payment. This is for the entire year. So you get access to those monthly workshops, to the Discord server, to the monthly social events. Everything is included in there. Um, and we have a ranging price from $200 to $700. Um, if $200 is still out of your price range, let us know. This is not meant to be a financial barrier for you. Um, you can check out the website. We've got all sorts of information on how the subsidies are there and available to you. Um, so I think it's just so, so powerful that we uh, are thinking about all of the ways that we can build communities together. Oh, thanks, Jazz. She popped in a link um, to the website if that's something that that you might be interested in post event um, lots of really really great stuff happening there so um those were my four top tips um so i'm curious if you could let me know in the chat which was the most valuable tip that you're walking away with so if you had to nar narrow it down to one or two which are the pieces that you are taking away from this talk because I hope it was helpful for you um, because there's so much I could talk about but I only had a short time so um yes as main is a superstar um, if you haven't listened to his podcast on the Gap Year podcast, you totally should. Um, and he's going to be around as part of our alumni panel tomorrow as well. So tomorrow we've got uh, four alumni who have had very different um, Gap Year experiences. Um, and they're going to share their stories and answer your questions. So jump into the Discord. Let people know um, uh, if you have any questions you want us to ask them. That would be a really great um, place to, to chat. So 